what's up everybody? It's Hosh Nasi, KI6NAZ, and I wanted to talk today about digital HF radio. You know I'm a big fan of digital HF radio. I have videos out on PSK31 and some other stuff I've been working on. Recently I've been doing a lot of FT8 and Whisper with my Zygu X5105, and I wanted to do a quick little general how-to video. It's going to be focused on the X5105, but there's a lot of universal things that are going to relate to all radios, so let's get into some of those things. In general, there's two things you look for when you are setting up your radio for digital communications. That's uh, one, rig control or cat control, computer aided transmitter or transceiver, something like that, and, and the in and out of the audio, right? So you wanna feed your computer with the so the tones that are coming in from the radio and you want to send your radio tones from the computer that are ready to be modulated and sent out over RF. There's a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to cover one thing and I'll talk about some of the other. So more often than not, if you're using cat control, you're probably going to have a cable like this. This is a serial dongle that goes from analog to serial and then a connector for your radio. And so basically what's happening here is the commands are gonna go from USB into this, into your radio. They're gonna be acknowledged by the radio and then you'll be changing frequencies, changing modes, etc., based off of the capabilities that your radio can let the computer control. Now, there's all kinds of different software titles that will allow you to do this. Some people use something called Ham Radio Deluxe. There's something called Ham Lib. A lot of computers come pre-configured with Ham Lib. Uh, I do recommend that if you're going to use Ham Lib, you go download the most recent version of Ham Lib and install it. And then if you're using something like uh, WSJT-X, the ham limb will be updated for the most recent version for the rig that you're trying to control. So the good news is that it, when it comes to cat control, it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. You're gonna be in a situation where your, your cable's not gonna be acknowledged, so you have to download drivers. That's pretty straightforward because it's either gonna be acknowledged by the computer or not. You'll be able to use your operating system to see if the particular USB socket that you plugged into is acknowledging the dongle and whatnot. Sometimes you may have to have the radio actually powered on before you plug it into your computer. Keep that in mind. Your radios will vary, but you should, you should check. So now the next thing is how do you get the audio from your radio into the computer and back and forth, vice versa? Well, so the Zygu uses this 8-pin DIN connector, right? It's basically like a PS2 keyboard connector, if you remember those. Some use uh, the mouse cables, some use just 2.5 millimeter headphone jacks, aux cables, in and out. Uh, this particular case, the Zygu actually has this cool little adapter. You plug the DIN cable in, and then you've got your two out connectors for 2.5 jacks that go into your computer. This is what I use for that. So going from my little interface, my DIN connector, I have a 2.5 millimeter jack that goes to a split, uh, single mono, basically the tip is the live portion, and so you've got a, a receive and a transmit or uh, an input or an output or a mic cable and a speaker cable. And what I like to use are these cheap little dongles these little USB dongles. I'll post one in the description on my Amazon A store. Very cheap. You can buy a couple of these. Sometimes they'll have volume control built into them, which is nice. And what you'll do is they'll have obviously a mic and a, uh, a speaker, and you just make sure you've got them plugged in correctly, and then you plug that into your computer. And what this allows you to do is you can still use your computer for listening to YouTube or listening to music or whatever while you are operating your computer because the application is going to use this dongle, which is going to show up as, you know, USB audio device or something like that. Very simple, very easy. There is a more expensive option. It's called a Signal Link. It'll run you about $125. I'll also post a link to that if you want to see that um, or if you're interested in spending the big money. The advantage with the Signal Link is you have little front panel controls for volume and control on the receive and output. And that way you can get it just right when you're balancing levels because that is important. So once you've sourced your CAT cables, your USB CAT cables, your input, output, or AF in, AF out, or your receive, your microphone, your speaker cables, all that stuff. Uh, then you're going to plug it all in, basically, right? But there's a kind of an order you want to go with plugging everything in. Generally, you want to get everything connected, right? And before you go into the computer, you want to power on the radio. Then you'll make your USB connections for the USB audio jack and the USB cat cable. That generally allows the computer to have the power coming from the 
radio or powering whatever that serial chip is, whether it's in the dongle or sometimes the radio itself has the uh, digital or the serial to digital converter. And you need to have power to the radio for it to be turned on and to go to the computer or be acknowledged by the computer. However, once that's the case, then you're going to start up your digital software. In this case, WS. J, uh, WST, WSJTX, and uh, you're going to set up your rig at that point. Now, rig settings can be difficult. If you're using a Japanese fairly standard HF radio, there's most likely going to be a rig selection for you. However, if you're using the Zygu, for instance, this shows up as an ICOM 7000. The ICOM IC7000 rig pattern or rig definition is what the computer is going to use to know the commands that it wants to send to the radio via the CAT control. You have options like data bits, 7 or 8. For the Zygu, it's 8. For stop bits, you're going to use 1. Handshake is none. Under force control lines, DTR, low, and RTS, high. Now, when it comes to the PTT method, there's a couple ways to do that with different radios. You can use Vox, which means you're going to tell your radio to wait for voice on the fly to, to turn on the PTT. So when the signal starts coming in on the receive or the transmit side of the computer, the receive side of your radio, it's going to activate the PTT and it's going to begin to transmit. Now, more sophisticated setups will use the CAT cable to actually do that. The Zygu is capable of that through the CAT cable, and so that's what I generally select. So once you have everything connected, you're going to enter into this kind of uh, back and forth cat and mouse game of figuring out if you have the cat control actually set up correctly in the computer. Same goes for the PTT, but start with the cat. What's going to happen is you're going to click that little test cat button, which is on almost all software titles that do digital, and it's probably going to like vomit on you or explode. That's because your settings probably aren't exactly right. Unless you're, ex you're using the Zygu and you're following what I just posted exactly, you're probably going to get some failures here and there and some errors. Uh, fear not, you just have to start toggling and playing around or Googling what the proper settings are for your radio. You click that test cat and eventually it will turn green or activate or you'll get a confirmation. When that's the case, then you wanna test the PTT. And again, this is either gonna be through Vox or it's gonna be through cat. Once they're both green, then you're actually gonna go into using the application. You'll know you're halfway there if you see your data or you see data coming in and being received on the computer, you'll usually see some kind of like volume jumping up and down on the receive side, the incoming side to the computer. This is good news. This allows you to basically say, okay, I have data coming in and hopefully begin, you're using cat control and you're using something like WSJTX. WSJTX will set the, the band you want to be on and it will set the frequency. And if all things working, you're going to start to see the waterfall fill. And you may even see little vertical stripes of data packets coming in. That's great news. You can just click on those or on the screen when it's decoding, you'll see the actual data coming in. You're halfway there. Congratulations. Now, your next step is you're going to have to set your volume or your output of your computer so that you don't overload your radio. So starting at about the halfway point, your microphone or your output or your transmit side of your computer started halfway. Now, if you want to avoid um, messing with people at all while you set this up, uh, Whisper is a really good mode to use for that. Whisper is a transmit only. Um, you receive, but you you upload what you receive to the internet via computer or whatnot. Uh, so you're you're not really going to be messing with anybody trying to make a QSO or you send out a QSO, but then you can't respond because something happens. So Whisper is really nice. I recommend Whisper if you're going to set up your computer for digital, your radio for digital, all that good stuff. What you want to happen is for that whole 15 second block for you to transmit your whole data signature, the PTT stops and you're good. What's more often than not going to happen is you're going to not at all PTT the radio, nothing's going to happen, or you're going to PTT for a very short amount of time, or you're going to PTT and you're not going to see any data or um, your power bar or meter going up or down on the radio, or if you have an SWR power meter, you're not going to see the needles moving around at all, meaning you're not transmitting anything or sending anything out from the computer. If the case is you don't see any power whatsoever from the, the computer into your radio, I have a trick on how you test to make sure that your computer is actually outputting the tones you think it's supposed to be. Take a USB speaker like this, go to the aux connector, and plug the connector, the output, 
into the, the, the speaker and then turn it on and then try to do your CQ again. You should hear this thing blow up with like modem sounds back when we were in the AOL days. So if you are getting sound out, but your radio is not saying anything or transmitting anything or the power bar is moving or anything like that, it's possible that your radio needs to be actually configured to accept the incoming data through the aux cable. How you do that on the Zygu, you go to menu number seven, option MSL, and you click it until it says aux uh, in line or line in. Okay, so you have a different couple options there with your own radios. Make sure that if your radio does offer this kind of capability that you do select the actual aux input. So you believe you have sound coming out of your computer, you have the input configured correctly on the radio, and maybe you've seen just a, a little bit of data or not much at all, or the power is just not moving that much. What you probably need to do then is start to bump up the volume. Go from the halfway point and start bumping it up either on your signal link or your dongle or on the operating system itself. What's gonna happen is you're gonna find kind of a sweet spot. Um, you don't want to crank it so that you're always doing 100% power because eventually in a certain, as you operate more, um, you could overload the radio momentarily and make the cat control freak out and the radio potentially stop functioning until you power cycle it or do something else. So uh, don't try to get like 100% power coming out of your radio at all times because it's, it's kind of too hard to get that sweet spot because it's going to fluctuate as it's transmitting. So find a sweet spot. If you're making contacts, you're probably okay. So hey guys, uh, if you enjoyed this, maybe check out my channel on Friday. What's the date today? On Friday, March 9th, if you're watching this after the fact, go watch the video. It's going to be about FT8 and Whisper. We're going to be doing a live stream. I'm probably going to spend over an hour just going all over this detail after you get it all set up. Now what do you do? How do you operate? We're going to be having some fun, hopefully anyway. And as always, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Give me a plus thumbs there and uh, maybe click the little bell. Comment below if you have any questions. If you're interested in getting involved with the Ham Radio Crafts Course, we have a Facebook group, we have a Discord, and I have my Patreon. And there's all kinds of rewards like newsletters and access to special areas of the Discord uh, from within. So if that's interesting to you, check all the links out down below and I'll talk to you later. See ya.